Isolated along the west bank of the Naran River in the south central part of Kyrgyzstan's western province of Jalalabad, the town of Tashkemir offers a prime example of the struggle seen by small villages in young, financially unstable countries. Riding on a strong Soviet led coal mining industry, the city thrived through much of the 20th century. But when Kyrgyzstan gained its sovereignty after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, everything changed. Today, crumbling buildings and poor living conditions grip Tashkemir's landscape and its people. With a highly unreliable electrical grid, most homes burn coal for heat, creating a thick haze in the air around town. Varying reports of the local unemployment rate exist, with some residents claiming it is as high as 90%. Coal mining remains the locale's top economy-based activity, but the environment of coal extraction operations has also drastically changed over the last 20 years. Some local workers partake in open pit mining, one of the safer methods of extraction. However, with less risk comes smaller wages for the laborers, and the machinery and equipment remaining from the Soviet era that still works is decaying and ramshackle at best. Large, rusted, and time-worn excavators tear into the mountains on the outskirts of the city, and laborers pick through the rubble for varying sizes of coal blocks. Often the work becomes a family affair, with children and grandparents alike scouring the pit for coal to fill the white bags that define Tashkemir and its local economy. Higher paying but far more dangerous, underground miners risk life and limb on a daily basis during coal mining season, which runs from early September to late January each year. During the Soviet era, timber from Siberian forests was brought for support beams in underground mines, but after the Soviets' fall, this timber and other equipment was sold off to other countries, namely China, when money stopped flowing to Tashkemir from Moscow. Furthermore, not even basic ventilation systems exist in the caves, allowing for the buildup of methane and other hazardous gases. The air is also thick with dust, making each breath detrimental to the workers' throats and lungs. Each bag that the miners fill inside is hauled by hand, one by one, out of the caves. Present day conditions are obviously treacherous and contribute to respiratory problems, severe permanent injuries, and far too frequently, the death of miners. One local coal customer is Rizpek Ergashov, a retired coal miner himself. One bag of coal keeps Ergashov's house warm for two days, but he is all too aware of the risks that workers in his community take to get that coal to customers like him. Ergashov, who began mining in 1965 and retired in 1995, speaks longingly of better days in Tashkemir, saying that in his youth, coal mining was safe and prosperous, and that everyone in town had jobs and lived comfortably. Today, he says the mining of coal is wild and reckless, but unfortunately, the entire town's economy continues to revolve around it. One victim of this change in mining culture is Kutbidin Ozanaliev, a 29-year-old man who began mining coal two years ago because there were no jobs available related to his studies in forestry and construction. In early December, a one-half-ton block of coal fell from the wall of the cave he was working in and rolled onto it. The weight of the coal broke his tailbone and hip and severed his urinary tract. Ozanaliev's wife of seven months, Myram Egamberdi Kizi, stays with him at the hospital to help his doctors care for him. His doctor, Kanabek Solomatov, says Ozanaliev should see a full recovery, but Ozanaliev says he will never go back to coal mining. A few blocks from the hospital, Adabayev Tokoy Raskulbakovic rests in his fifth floor apartment while his wife, Tashmatova Zamira, cooks, cleans, and cares for him. Raskulbakovic suffered a broken hip in a mining accident in October of 2011. He currently gets out of bed twice a day and, with the help of his crutches, walks in circles around his living room. His doctors say he should make a full recovery by May of 2012, though he too says he will never return to underground coal mines again. Raskulbakovic and Ozanaliev are fortunate to have a choice in their future though, as many miners involved in accidents suffer permanently debilitating injuries. In January 2002, Sarpayev Ayabek Sarabaybek was mining in a cave outside of Tashkemir when a large block of coal broke free from the ceiling and fell on him. His spine was broken and his hip cracked in several places. Months later, doctors decided to remove the joint that connected his right leg to his pelvis. Today, he is only mobile when his children are present to help him into his outdated wheelchair. He has no feeling in his right leg and only a dull ache in his left leg, 
and is completely dependent on his family to feed and bathe him. The extensive care and therapy he needs does not exist in Tosh Kamir, and the family does not have enough money to move closer to the doctors and care offered in Bishkek. Sara Bybik said that the government promised him a new wheelchair years ago, but that promise was never honored. A social fund set up to help injured laborers provides 3,000 Kyrgyz Sam per month, which is only about 65 US dollars. This amount is barely enough to feed his family of five, and their only other income is provided by their 19-year-old son, who earns money by mining coal. Complicating matters further, the home that Sara Bybik built with his brother in the 1990s is on a steep hill, so in the winter months he cannot even leave their property. Unless more resources become available, Sara Bybik is doomed to this sedentary life for the rest of his days. But even Sara Bybik can consider himself lucky. Rulinara Umarova was widowed in 2009 when a mine collapse claimed the lives of her husband and oldest son. She is now left alone to raise the couple's three young sons and also only receives 3,000 som per month to help with expenses. Troublesome stories like these are easy to come by in Tosh Kamir, and they're not likely to go away anytime soon. The village is trapped by its resources, and as long as there is coal to be found in the hills and mountains on its outskirts, local laborers will continue to flock to it to earn their wages and support their families. And until the financial stability exists in the country to create safer working conditions, the work will continue to be wild and unregulated, and tragic accidents will continue to haunt the residents of Tosh Kamir.